Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Let's Play The Stanley Parable. Last time we went to the right room, then we went to the left room, and now we're back here, and I'm going to go to the right room, because my character is incapable of speaking. Why did you do that? Quickly, hurry back in the other direction. Perhaps we're not too late. Uh, whoa. That is one slim cabinet. Nope. Won't let me out. How about here? Can I go in there? Nope. Okay. What if I go back in here? Still nothing, huh? Okay. So I suppose I'll be going into the left room again. Which isn't good because my character can't speak, so oh, it's ruined. You I can't believe after everything we talked about that you my story, you've destroyed my work. Why? For what? What did you get out of that? What did you think was so special about seeing the game undone? Left here like so much garbage, it... Well, it's worthless now. And what am I supposed to do? Even if there were a way to continue, would it be worth it? To know that my story is now incorrect? How can I go back to that? I can't erase that knowledge. I'll have to live with it forever. Reliving its impossibility forever. I couldn't live that way. Is it better to shut the game down entirely? To willingly destroy all of my work? I don't know. What's the answer? What do I do? What do I do? What do I... No, I have to. I have to shut the game down. I have to. I have to. No! I didn't mean it! This is the end. Whoa. Alien noises. Still here, here in this pile of rubbish, with you, you, who thought you were so clever. Now look where we are. My entire game is destroyed. It was the only thing in the world that was mine, and you've run it into the ground. What, did you think that would be funny? You just had to see? Didn't I impress upon you how important it was to be like Stanley? He actually knows how to do what I tell him to. He understands that if I say to do something, there's a damn good reason for it. That thought hadn't even occurred to you, had it? That there's a world outside of you? You're a child. Oh, my story. If you'd just gone through the door on the left, you would have seen it. There was a whole underground facility. You would have destroyed it <laughs> and been victorious. It would have been so perfect. I worked so hard on it. I tried so hard. Whoa. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. What? What's going on? Stanley? Hello? Are you... Is everything okay? Stanley, please. I... I need you to make a choice. What? I need you to walk through the door. Are you listening to me? Can you hear me? Is everything all right? Stanley, this is important. <laughs> The story needs you. It needs you to make a decision. It cannot exist without you. Do you understand me? Whatever choice you make is just fine. They're both correct. You cannot be wrong here. We can work together. I'll accept whatever you do. I simply need you to take that step forward, please. Choose. Do something. Anything. This is more important than you can ever know. I need this. The story needs it. So, you hear me? Are you there? Are you listening to this? Stanley, are you there? I... Okay. It's okay, I can wait. You need time to decide. Time to make sure your choice is correct. That is the best choice. That's all right. I'll wait for you to decide. I'm going to raise the master volume a little bit. Okay. Decide what's the right thing to do. Take as much time as you need. I can't get out. How do I get out? <gasps> okay. Back to playing a Stanley, maybe? Okay. All of his co-workers were gone. What? What could it mean? 
Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. So... Am I replaying the game? When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Uh... Okay. I'm hoping it doesn't just take me back to doing... Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office. Hoping he... Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Except I'm not. Was this here before? I don't remember being able to go downstairs. Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all. None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? <laughs> why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeating? Yes. No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange. This can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming, he yelled. <laughs> this is all a dream. Oh, what a relief Stanley felt to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real-life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this. Where did this car come from? So, he imagined himself flying and began to gently float above the ground. Whoa! Then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field, and it too appeared. It was so much fun, and Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, <laughs> thinking about how it's describing my thoughts. He thought. He thought. <laughs> and while he thought it all very odd and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself, believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was in fact a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too, surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control, that this was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently, and he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin, the press of the mattress on his back, the fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment and my wife and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. I am okay. My head hurts. No. 
Stanley began screaming. Please, someone, wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? Whoa. And everything went black. Okay. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. What? Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. <coughs> but on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy. This much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this. And in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day. The very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career. And by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. The Mariella Parable? Alright, more loading! Oh, progress. Of some kind. This game is a trip. How long was I sitting there? Stanley wondered to himself. Minutes? Days? Centuries? Did something crucial happen while my senses were turned? He made a note to be more careful with time from now on. Right. Can I read this screen? I can't seem to read any of these monitors. They have to sort of glare. Okay. So, papers everywhere. Good sign. Back to the room. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. It's always the one on the left. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Wow. Yes. This room. What a beautiful... But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Okay. And so he detoured through the maintenance section, walked straight ahead to the opposite door, and got back on track. Um, no. This is exciting! But Stanley didn't want to go back to the office. He wanted to wander about and get even further off track. So now in order to get back, he needed to go, um... Uh, uh, da, 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 da. From here, it's um left. Only choice. Okay. Oh, oh no, oh. no, it's to the right. My mistake. Oh. Okay. No, 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 not the right. Why would I have ever said it was to the right? What was I thinking? It's clearly. Oh dear! Would you hold on for a minute, please? Now, let's see, we went down right, left, down, left, right. <laughs> yep, yep, okay, okay, yes. I've got it now. This story is absolutely, definitely this way. Oh. Alright, guys, we're out of time for today, or for this episode, so stay tuned for the next one, the next episode of Let's Play the Stanley Parable. Thanks for watching, and bye!